Well, today is going to be a lot of fun. We are going to be recreating um, the look of these fantastic and uh, awe-inspiring and very popular animated films from the Spider-Verse. That's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the stylistic elements that make these uh, movies look so original, so different from everything else out there. We'll study them and then we'll look at how you could use custom brushes and tools in Photoshop to very quickly create similar uh, stuff. And this is just going to be a blast. What else is there to say? Who doesn't love Spider-Man? Who doesn't love a great animation? And who doesn't love really fun, punchy illustration? Okay. And who doesn't love Spidey, Spidey, Spidey? I think I already said that. Um, are you ready? You're going to have some fun with me? Let's do it. Uh, if you're watching over on Behance, welcome. Thanks for being here. What's up? Katarina, hola, hola. Nice to see you. Marie, how are you? Ivy, thanks for joining us. We're doing well. Steve and Cryo and Cody and Oliver. What's up, everybody? Paloma, how are you? Nice to see you. And Clarissa, all these fine folks joining us over on be.net slash Adobe Live or behance.net slash live or be.net slash live. All these options for the same place. That's Behance. Okay, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for joining us as well. Hope you are going to have some fun. Just remember that on YouTube, I'm not following the chat so closely. So if you want to join in the chat and get um, a nice conversation going with your fellow viewers and with me, after all this is live, then go ahead and do so at Behance, be.net slash Adobe Live. Let's do it. We are going to draw, draw, draw. Okay, so we are just starting right here with a still from the most recent uh, film Across the Spider-Verse. The reason I've chosen this still to start off our demonstration with is because it actually combines a lot of the elements that make these movies look the way they look. We're going to just break it down right here, gang. Okay, first things first. One of the things I find really interesting about what they've done with uh, this illustration style or animation style is this weird combination of linear elements, so more of sort of flat graphic drawing, okay? Line art and flat shapes with no rendering combined with rendered areas. So areas that feel like they have more light and shadow and form, okay? So we're looking at sort of this combination of pure 2D graphic flat representational art and then the more sort of painterly sculpted rendered look. And this really seamless and sometimes not seamless at all, but actually kind of jarring and that's intentional um, blending of the two within a single frame. There's also a really cool thing that's going on with patterns and most of the time these are um, a combination of halftone patterns but also sort of random um, texture, I would say surface texture kind of stuff. So if you look over here, okay, you've got this spatter kind of a look and as you well know we could easily achieve this with brushes and we're going to do that. But you've got this sort of spatter and then mixed in, okay, you've got this kind of thing where it's almost like a collage kind of element where you just throw in a completely random, colorful, punchy swatch, okay, in a um, in a really organic kind of torn paper kind of a shape. And you'll see that popping up here and there. Um, and what this reminds me of is sort of the Trapper Keeper kind of aesthetic from the 1980s, where you just throw a bunch of shapes on top of one another with varying patterns and colors. Sometimes they don't really go together, but they're really bright, um, really saturated, and uh, that's really what you're getting right here. And then we see that halftone sneaking in here, so we're echoing, right? We also see a scale change where you're getting a smaller halftone here, okay, halftone dot pattern, bigger in the backgrounds, and here's one that's just pure fat in your face, um, absolutely no gradation from bigger dots to smaller dots. Uh, we just see it all one flat pattern right there. Um, another cut paper kind of element here, it looks like a page torn straight out of a comic from Spidey, um, from the Marvel comics. And then look at this, what do we have here? What a weird combo, okay? Um, if you look at this, if we zoom in for a moment, I want you to notice, um, whoops, sorry about that. I want you to notice that what you're seeing is rendering right here. See, shadow, light, okay? Um, so we're really feeling the form, three-dimensional form of the face there. Uh, same with the mouth, etc. But then there's this interesting thing where the eyebrows are literally just kind of like stuck on. Okay, and then I want you to notice this. A line right there helping to delineate where we break that plane that's facing us on the bridge of the nose and we're going to the side plane. So there's a line there and a line here delineating that same um, break on the opposite side of the bridge 
okay, line right here. So we're, we're actually using line art on top of more rendered um, work. And then look at this. This is so interesting the way the hair is done. It's like taking mixer brushes and just dragging on through or taking a smudge tool and dragging on through some areas of dark and light to help add some, um, some good uh, strands of hair um, inside those locks, okay, to add a bit more form. Um, but then at the same time, this is the, all part of the same drawing, you jump over to this side and you've got this blue line right here on the, uh, on the left side of the face or on her right, okay, where we're just like, okay, I wanna just completely outline this shape for you, okay? Um, and now here's the other thing you're gonna see all throughout uh, the stills from the movie which is this taking a shape and then um, pushing it um, off center, okay? So like this whole um, offset idea, you know, if you've ever looked at, at printing where you're using four color printing, two color printing, three color printing, using a printing press or using some other means where you have to try and get everything lined up. Um, and sometimes you get a little bit off grid and you'll get a little bit of an offset look where something doesn't quite line up. They use the heck out of that, uh, this sort of look in um, these Spideyverse uh, flicks, okay? And you'll see it right here. And it's a lot of times you're getting that um, RGB uh, offset kind of look where you're gonna get a, a glow from the red channel, from the blue channel, um, from the green channel, and that's gonna punch it up with these really, really bright colors. Um, a lot of glow as well, that glow effect being used with blending modes such as uh, overlay, highlight, hard light, um, color dodge, things like that. This is all achievable um, in an illustration and it's just a really cool weird blend of all that stuff in one image. Uh, let's pop over here and look at an extreme version of all this stuff where you just go nuts with overdoing it uh, with these half tones, with these really, really saturated colors, with these shapes that get repeated multiple times offset. Um, and this is helping to achieve this feeling of like really intense action and movement. But then look at this, you'll get these random sort of pixels here and there. And this is sort of calling out a little bit to, um, you know, OG video game culture, uh, to the fact that we are dealing with digital um, tech and we're living in a digital world and this just kind of reflects that aesthetic that all of us have come to appreciate um, which is like early early digital graphics um, before everything became so so highly rendered and perfect there's something really charming and really fun to look at when you can see visible pixels and to just throw them in as a design element is just super cool but it also can communicate this idea of something being um, foreign or otherworldly okay and uh, it just it just does a great job of that. Look at all these um, these shapes, these hexagonal shapes we have in the background, and echoes of the hexagonal shapes, and then these lines cutting across, uh, breaking up that space. Okay, um, again with sort of what I would call like a halftone pattern, but it's really more sort of a screen pattern, screen tone, the kind of thing you would see on an old CRT monitor or something like that when you're up close. Um, all that kind of stuff mixed in with these extremely saturated bright colors. Um, you're going to see more of that happening. A lot of it is purely a design choice. It has nothing to do with, with storytelling, like this is an actual space that you need to explore and understand, or this is an object that you need to explore and understand as part of the environment. No, it's literally just there because it looks cool. And that's one of the things that's really cool about these films is the freedom that the artists have to say, okay, I see this frame and the action and whatever's happening is clear to the viewer. So now I'm just gonna party and I'm gonna take whatever else is in the frame. And if I can add a little bit of an interesting textural element or some color or some shapes or whatever, just to punch it up and have fun and make it more comic book, more crazy, more graphically um, just like really exciting, then I just go for it. And um, gosh, what a blast it must've been to work on this film as a result of all that, okay? I'm gonna pop up here for just a moment. I wanna show you atmosphere. Um, so this idea of using these really, really like um, saturated, but also kind of otherworldly colors is I think one of the coolest things about it. Um, and then also really calling a little bit back to uh, the Saul Bass um, graphics to introduce um, movie titles. Uh, this is, you know, you have these, these really simplified, oversimplified silhouettes and shapes. Okay, so for all of the lights, 
with the large billboards here, these illuminated billboards in the cityscape here, instead of actually having any detail to show what they are, you just have this graphic shape. It's like, this is a rectangle, this is a rectangle. Varying sizes, okay? A little bit of offset color and glow and all this other kind of cool stuff. Like if you look at any of those um, Saul Bass uh, graphics, you know, Vertigo, etc., for Hitchcock, um, and then if you look at sort of the, uh, this sort of, uh, Spielberg did a really strong kind of um, tribute to that, uh, homage to that in Catch Me If You Can, for example. Um, it's so cool to overlay that with what's more of sort of a rendered scene, um, but again, then like simplification wherever you need it. Uh, this whole silhouette thing, you see that popping up in the films as well. Still blending in where they can, these, these half tones. And another thing I want to call attention to, and this happens in, in two specific ways, which we're going to try with our own illustration today, is using the halftones where you have a transition from light to shadow, okay? Um, you're going to see that a lot, especially on characters where they're, they're illuminated from the back. You're going to see a transition from the light behind them into the shadow um, and where there's a planar change and they use the halftones for that specifically. Second thing you're going to see for where the halftones are employed is for um, elements that are in the background. They're going to use a halftone pattern for those to kind of push them back a little bit and make them less clear, less defined, less specific. Um, and actually there is a third use of the halftones that I found really interesting, which is wherever there's an actual light source. So if you see light um, coming, say, from the corner of a room and it's illuminating a space and it's, it's starting to lose its power as you get further and further away from the actual source of the light. So as it uh, comes across a scene or as it's in, if it's an interior space, as it comes further away from the actual light source, you'll see a halftone dither from a gradation from the really intense uh, tight uh, pattern of dots that are larger to the smaller, more spaced apart uh, dots. And that's another cool uh, way of using the halftones as well. You're gonna see that. And then every now and then, you're gonna see this kind of element right here. Okay, so I really want you to notice what's going on. Um, this is a suggestion of very quick movement, but instead of actually animating that movement by having you use fewer frames for the leg, in this case, to go from point A to point B, you actually fill one of those frames with a drawing like this, which is showing this element that's out of focus because it's moving too fast for the quote unquote camera to capture it. And so it's blurred, but this is drawn with line, okay, suggesting the direction of that movement. Um, and uh, you'll see this throughout. And it's a really cool, really exciting and fun technique. Um, and it's, it's really pronounced in such a way that you can actually see it. If you're watching the movie, there are moments where, of course, this goes by very quickly, but your eye will catch that. Um, and it just adds to that sort of comic book drawn feel, right? This is really like a, a truly a, um, a love letter to, to drawing this, this movie, I would say, and like comic book drawing techniques and, and things like that, that visual language that we, um, after so many, uh, decades have come to sort of understand. If you look at Scott McCloud's book, for example, Understanding Comics, there's all kinds of great stuff in there about what things mean uh, when they're drawn a certain way and how we just accept them and it becomes part of the language we understand of comics and of illustration in general, okay? And one more thing I wanna point out here is occasionally you'll also get an actual solid outline. See this? It's pure line drawing um, as if you were drawing this as a frame in a comic. Look at the foot, look at the knee. Everything is actually drawn, it's inked as a line art drawing um, with color inside. So. Almost the whole, you know, comic book aesthetic of ink, flat color, um, sometimes some halftone gradations and things. And then if you look at uh, the cityscape here, a lot of selective line art to just suggest the busyness of it and the general forms. Okay, but then the colors are completely offset. They're coming outside the boundaries. Um, and this, this again, helps to kind of push it back a little bit, but it also just creates this sort of jarring effect where things are, are not quite in register. And uh, this is this is a really cool way to add depth and layering um, to that to that background. Note though, note this is very important. The simplification of the color scheme here. If we were to use a lot of detail and color in each of these buildings, okay, it would take away from the focal point, which is our hero character here. Okay, so we're just using this green all the way through. We're using this blue gray for these elements that are closer to us in the foreground, and then for the extreme distance background. They're using a color that's closer to the color for the sky, the atmosphere, 
there and that just with that atmospheric perspective is just pushing that back into the distance but that's a very effective way to work um, paring down that color so we can just focus on the character here. Note how simply the hair is rendered, okay? We have a shape for the hair and just a few lines, right? Literally like five or six, to just describe a little bit of the texture of the hair there. Um, you'll see another example of this line art technique right here. Look at that, this could be a comic book drawing straight from the page of a comic book. Um, but again, it's really interesting how there are some areas that are not drawn with line still mixed in, okay? This here, nope, this is all like, you know, painted, so to speak. You have shape right there. But then look at this rendering, okay? Look at the line art here. We're using actual line to describe form? What the heck? This is just coming out of nowhere, right? Um, it's such a blend of techniques that you see, but you, you start to really kind of break it down and understand how it works um, the more you study it. Like if I were to show you this, you'd go, yeah, this makes sense in this movie. Another line art drawing, okay? And then we have this big graphic shape behind and then look at all this great activity we have in the background just making it feel like boom punching straight out of a 1960s uh, comic book with the uh, off register halftone color but then you have this crazy crazy green color this though this you couldn't even print that color right this is screen only and this is the screen medium we're talking about a movie um but there's so much really to enjoy in that crazy frame but we still know where to look okay you still know where to look with that really strong silhouette. Uh, look at this. This is crazy. See this? It's almost like somebody just said, okay, I know I need to darken that leg and push it back. This is our leg in the front. And I just don't want that to be, you know, feeling like it's it's um, on the same level or layer or rather plane, if you will, as this leg. So I'm just going to knock it back. But to do so, I'm going to just do it super sloppy with a big, messy, shady line that's going to actually, look at this. That whole area actually pops outside of the line art itself that's containing uh, this shape and containing the color. Like, who does that, right? Pretty nuts. All right, and just for this fat final one, I wanted to show this uh, same um, off-register idea and everything we've seen, but look at this. Actual drawn lines to show the directional movement of the character. Is this necessary in an animated movie? You know which way they're moving. Okay, but this just kind of make, sends it over the top again. We exaggerate. We push it further, and uh, it's just so fun, right? Absolutely sane, insane. So let's pause for a moment, see if any questions about what's going on here. I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm excited about this. It's really, really fun. Are we going to learn some secrets about Spider-Ham? No, I'm sorry, we're not. Um, but maybe you've got some secrets to share with us, Steve. Um, all right, so what's going on? Hey, oh, New Zealand. Yeah, uh, that's right, Steve's from New Zealand. I always forget that. Um, all right, no questions or comments specifically. Uh, people are chatting in the chat, saying hi to each other. Um, they're enjoying what's going on here with uh, all this craziness. Um, yeah, so pointing all this out, yeah, this is a good thing to notice, and then you really kind of appreciate it the more you see it. Um, we didn't talk about this frame, but like this is just more of the same. You can totally see what's going on here. Crazy weird combination of rendering, okay? And then, wait a minute, we also have some line art. We have some halftone on top of the face in multiple different ways. We've got these uh, diagonal line halftones. We've got the um, dot pattern halftones, okay? We've got line art for the ear, but everything's off register. Over on this side, which creates this, this like activity over there, this vibration, okay? And that's a good word to use for a lot of what you're describing when you look at a lot of these frames. And then there's that whole idea of things moving away from center. You see this in a manga all the time. Look at these lines drawn this direction. Okay, everything's centering from, from this point here. We go zing, zing, zing away from that center. And this creates a zooming in effect and a lot of motion, a lot of action. Um, very, very effective. Once again, look at the silhouette. We're echoing that shape with other colors, some more in focus than others, um, some color overlay effects. It's just all over the place. It's crazy. So today, what are we going to do? What we're going to draw? We're going to draw a little Spidey scene. We're going to use this. Now, I want you to just check this out. Look at that. What is going on there? That looks kind of Spidey-ish from Spider-Verse. Well, how did I do this? Um, yes, Imicorn, those are all screenshots from the trailer. Um, how does something like this happen? Well, let me show you. This just literally took me like three minutes, okay? And this is how we break it down. All right, I wanna show you what's going on here. All right, let's start with this layer right here. You go, well, how do you do that? Okay, let me show you, okay? Let me show you. We'll hide all this for a moment and we'll just do it all over again. You ready? Here we go. I'm gonna get rid of some 
miscellaneous layers we don't need. Um, now remember, custom brushes are your best friend here. So let's open up our brush sets and let's see what we've got to play with, okay? I'm gonna kick you all back to the Winter 2023 brush set right here, okay? This is available to all of you. And there's a brush in here called Barcode. All right, and I'm just gonna slam it in with the barcode there, kablam. And let's do this. Let's just go ahead and grab a bright color, throw it down, and we'll push it a little cooler and a little darker. And look, I just do this. Just draw across with that barcode brush. Okay, so I'm doing a nice strong diagonal. We like our diagonals, okay? Like that. Grab another color. We're gonna push it a little bluer, a little lighter. Just hit it this way, okay? Easy peasy, see that? And already we're creating something interesting and kind of funky and cool, All right? Got that strong directional movement, okay? And let's just kick it a little brighter and just hit right here towards the bottom, this little section. And then as we move up this way, okay, we're going to switch it up. We're gonna to come to the square bear brush right here and we're just gonna coat that square bear area right there and just tap, 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 tap. Make a little transition there, okay? Transition, 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 like so. Okay, and then we're gonna go super light right up here and we're gonna do that. Now so far you go, yeah, okay, that's fine, but it doesn't really look like what we were just looking at. And I say, don't you worry, not yet, okay? We're gonna take our screened ink brush and we're gonna just echo through, choo, 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 choo. Okay, with that same diagonal, crissy, crossy, crissy, crossy. Just drawing across like this. Okay. There we go. This is all just on one layer. I'm just having fun on one layer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now, here's the secret. You ready? We take this whole layer, okay, and we're gonna select with a feather, okay? I've got a feather on my selection, 100 pixels. I'm just gonna select this area right out here. Okay, and I'm gonna kinda like break it up a little bit. Kablam, whatever. And I'm just gonna duplicate that, Command J. Okay, now let's go to our filters and we're gonna go to blur, motion blur. And look at that. I can go nuts with that, I can go a little minimal, whatever. I'm just gonna blur this and I'm gonna select a vertical 90 degree blur right there, okay? You can make that extreme, we can do whatever we want with it, say okay. Now on the layer underneath, I go back, I say filter, blur, motion blur, and we're gonna kick it at that angle I was drawing, okay? So we're just gonna do that. See this, we can get right about where we were. I can just keep adjusting that until it feels about right, like so. Say okay. And now we can just continue to do stuff like this and I can take my selection tool again. Okay, we'll knock out that pixel uh, for down to zero for feather. So no more feathering going on. Okay, and now I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna come in here and following pretty much that same diagonal, I'm just gonna kinda do this. It's almost like I'm drawing buildings Okay, in perspective here. And I'm telling you, the, the whole idea with this, you know, using diagonals like this automatically, if you know anything about composition, is going to create a sense of movement. Diagonals create a sense of movement in your composition. Okay. And here we just grab a completely separate brush. We have all kinds of options in here. We got the squircle. Okay, we got the party brush. Maybe we use the squircle and we go a little darker, add a new layer, we fill that in, just like that. See how interesting that looks? Looks crazy. Go a little brighter, maybe towards the top here on this edge, maybe over here. Hit it with some really, really crazy bright color, maybe with the party brush. Like this, kablamo, kablamo, kablamo. Okay, and now that you've got that shape, all right, what you do is you just lock your layer transparency, okay? So I'm gonna hit the backslash, which is under the question mark on my keyboard, that locks that layer's transparency, and then just on some edges here, okay, I can create this illusion that we've got some different planes 
here in shadow. Okay, so I do this. Kind of select part of it there. So I'm just being being careful with my selections here. I want there to be this feeling that some of this stuff is in shadow, okay? We're gonna let the rest of it remain in the light, okay? So we do this and we do that, kablam and kablam and kablam and kablam, okay? Now, this whole area that I'm selecting, right, I'm gonna make that darker with a different brush, okay? And we've still got a whole bunch we can play with in this set, but I feel like I maybe wanna revisit uh, the uh, fall 2022 brushes, okay? These came out very recently. Um, lots of cool stuff to play with in here. And I like this uh, beast mode and drags is pretty cool, but this blade run brush is kind of just perfect for this kind of thing. So I'm gonna go a little darker, okay? And we're just gonna hit it like this. Bam, 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 bam. See that? Excelente, excelente. All right, so we're doing okay with all this business. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit some half tones in here. Super fast, super easy, okay? So what I'll do is again with that, that same, um, that same uh, lasso tool, okay, polygonal lasso, we're gonna knock it up again, 150 pixels. So we're going super soft with this, all right? And I'm just gonna come cr straight across this way. Bam. 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 All right. Now I've got a nice soft uh, transition there and I'm gonna hit it with this crazy bright greenish yellow, all right? Separate layer, just like that, all right? And we're gonna take that, we're gonna filter, blur it, Gaussian blur it, and we're just gonna hit that up big time, like 100 pixels, maybe even like 300 pixels. We're just gonna go crazy, bam. That's gonna make it super soft. That's kind of like a light source, okay? And then what we can do is we can, again, lock our layer transparency right there, okay? So I hit that um, that backslash key for you underneath the question mark, all right? And we're gonna warm this up a little bit. I'm gonna go more towards sort of like a reddish pink kind of a color. And using our gradation, uh, gradation tool here, I'm gonna switch to my circular gradient. And I'm just gonna hit it from this side and move this way, all right, like that. Just like that, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Make it move a little bit into that yellow, okay? And we're gonna clip it to the layer underneath. See that? So it's only affecting um, that layer there. Now if I combine these two layers together, okay, so now I've, I've got the gradient and I combined it with that, that um, earlier gradient that we made, I can now apply a halftone. So I can go to filters again, Go to noise, uh, pardon me, go to uh, pixelate, there we go. And there's my color halftone. Now I can make the the um, pixels really, really big on this. So I could make like, say maybe like 16 pixels. Okay, and look at that. Whee! How cool does that look? Now we can play with our color blending modes, right? Da 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 da, look at all this crazy stuff you can do. All right, that feels pretty slick. Overlay, soft light. All right, what do you think? What do you guys like out there? Tell me what you like. All of this is completely adjustable, right? You can do whatever you want with it. All right, I kind of like that overlay. That's kind of fun. Might want to stick with that. That's pretty slick right there. And now we can hit with a color on top of that. We go back to that crazy greenish kind of color. And now I can just, if I want, oops, hold on. Make sure I got the right color. There we go. Not sure why it's not switching colors for me. Hey, you, be good. What you doing there? There we go. That's what I want. Okay. Kablam. Got it. Uh, 
And uh, let's go ahead and take this gradient and let's adjust it with our hue and saturation. Command U right here. Do whatever you want with it. I'm gonna push it a little bit more towards that green right there. Got different layer blending modes we can use. Darker colors, fun. I like that linear burn. It feels kind of slick right there. Okay, and now what do we need? We need an actual city. So we've got some layers in here. We've got all kinds of fun, but what I can do is I can go out to the web and I can search for a little uh, city. What's up, Odari? Thanks for joining us. Nice to see you. Vitor, nice to see you as well. Yeah, a little bit of cyberpunk in there. Sure, sure, sure. You know it. Um, we haven't even begun to go crazy with this thing. We're just getting started, gang. We've got we've got time. We've got time. They've got like 26 minutes, and you just can't believe what I'm going to do in 26 minutes. Okay, so stay tuned. All right, so we're going to jump out now to the web just for a moment, and I'm going to grab, let's say, uh, I don't know, Tokyo, maybe New York, New York skyline. Just going to grab a photo. Of course, all the photos right now because of the crazy wildfires in Canada. <sighs> Hope everybody's safe. Stay safe, everybody. Really sorry about all that horrible news. Um, so a lot of the skyline photos that are available to me right now are from, from this current event, naturally. But I'm just looking for... Ah, here we go. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool right here. This could work. This could work. All right, here we go. I'm going to grab a photo. And... Does not have to be high res or anything like that. Don't you worry about that. I'm just gonna take this photo and I'm gonna rotate it so that things line up more or less with um, those diagonals I drew, okay? And then I'm just gonna go, bam, make it, make it berg, make it berg. Okay, right there. And we're gonna, we can do a couple layers of this. We could have like different layers of city, you know, like extreme foreground, background, whatever. You know, you could stretch it, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Okay, if you wanna add depth and distance, you can do that. We can like do that whole effect where we blur it out, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so I could maybe like just throw that in the background there. That whole area can be that city in the background. I can stretch it. Like that. Okay, we say go. Um, and then what you do is, I'm just gonna select subject. We're gonna select uh, subject and see how it grabs the buildings right there. And select subject again. You can do better, come on. Let me grab my uh, magic wand. Where are you? Quick selection. Select all this. If Paul Tranny were here, I know he'd show me like an easier way to do this, but you know, I draw all the time. I don't always make selections and fancy stuff with photos. So I'm still doing this quickly. Only takes a second. Look at that. We do that. We say goodbye, Sky. We don't need you. We don't need you, Sky. Okay. And we take this image and we're going to filter. We got a whole gallery of things you can do with the filter gallery. Okay, so we look at the filter gallery here and we can see right there, okay? You got to um, uh, look at all these crazy ones. We can do graphic pen, okay? It's gonna use whatever my foreground color is. So for now it's a little distracting, but we can always fix that later. Um, you can also go to artistic, you can do an underpainting, watercolor. Watercolor always does some cool stuff. So we'll increase the shadow intensity there. Just see, see what that does. See that? Pretty nifty. All right, now what I can do with this is I can select, okay, color range, select all the darks, the blacks in this right here, and I can punch those in with one of these crazy bright saturated colors. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're just gonna do that. See what that does right there? And then um, if I want, I can select everything else that isn't that color, all right? 
and I can select something else like that bright pink like that boop, boop, boop. Um, and then we can hit this we can just go da -da 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 -da. look at that different layer blending effects we can use okay so much fun cool 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 Oh man, there's just too many choices. This is the problem with doing this, is I just never know what to do with my too many decisions to make, too many choices. I can adjust my curves. Bam, bam. And then we can just hit this edge. Bam, 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 bam. So fun. I don't have to be perfect with this. Remember, part of this is like that it isn't quite all sticking to the lines. We erase some of that. All right. Do a little duplicate of it. Try another blending mode, like multiply. There we go. Maybe a darker color. Knock it back 50%. And then we take this bottom bit right here and we just delete it. And we get rid of this guy right there. I'm going crazy here. I'm doing so much more than I did with that previous layer that I was showing you guys, but this is why it's fun. All right, next thing I wanna do is I want to create, okay, an area where we have a light source that's really, really obvious. And again, you can do this with graphics, but look, remember one of the things that you, you notice, remember from the pictures I showed you is these hexagonal kind of deals, right? Like that. Um, let me just make sure I have no feathering right there. We just go bam, 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 bam. Okay, that's gonna be my cool like light source sort of thing. And I'm just gonna hit that first, right? With a really bright kind of color we've been using there a lot. All right, that's sort of and we're gonna take this and we're just gonna break it apart like that. And we come in the inside. Let me just do this. And we go to a overlay like that. And this is where I'm gonna grab another um, custom brush, right? And I just draw around the outside. See that? We're doing some more of that stuff that we see in the actual art from the film. Okay, we can duplicate that. And we're gonna just move it a hair to the left and then transform it irregularly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, pause and just kind of pull it out this way. Okay, and we're gonna hit that with a different color, like so. Okay, I'm using that pink, option delete. Okay, we can look at some of the blending modes for that as well, like this vivid light really does something cool right there. I like it. All right, you see how we do this, right? You see how this all comes together. Now, we haven't yet really established a clear foreground Right, we sort of have stuff in the background to middle ground kind of area. Um, you know, you can you can start playing with the layers themselves and decide like what kinds of effects you want. Stuff like that, for example, could really really work. That's a color burn uh, effect. You can knock the opacity back, right? So it's not so intense. Um, there's really no limit to how far you can go to continue with these kinds of effects and things like that. Now, one of the things we noticed was there was this sort of lines of action, all right? And I'm gonna draw Spidey here in another another minute or so, but I just wanna quickly point out to you that you can load, get more brushes, okay? So we're gonna get more brushes anytime you want right from the uh, website, the official Adobe Brush Library, but I'm gonna import my manga brushes, okay? So we're gonna go right here to Adobe, and um, this is where they all get made here, gang. This is all the magic stuff, all the magic. Um, and I'm gonna import mine, mine are in a, a TPL, 
And so I go to my brush sets and I go to my manga set from way back in the day, one of my faves. And I'm gonna load the, the TPL file here. So I gotta go to import, um, oops, here we go. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba 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 load tool presets. When you all do this, you won't have to do this because you'll be able to go to um, the brush set, um, the main download page, and you just grab what you need and it'll just automatically load it in, okay? So we're gonna import these as brushes. They show up right here in my brush sets, okay? And check this out, gang, you ready? What? Effects action lines. Holy Christmas, I didn't know those were there. Well, guess what? They are, and these are fun. Let's take a look at these, okay? Now what happens when I draw with these? Watch this, we'll make a new layer. And we're gonna use just white for a minute so you can really uh, see what these do. Whoa, see that? So I just draw around wherever my center is, okay? So let's have Spidey, for example, he's gonna be like right there, okay? We just go the other way like that. All right, Swing. okay. Now, of course, I can I can lock my layer transparency, make those colors be whatever I want. Um, they can be different in different places. You know, if we do a uh, color dodge, right, we're gonna get white everywhere. Um, but if we go to like overlay, you'll see that it's gonna have a different effect. And we can, of course, assign a color to it. We'll lock our layer transparency again. And we can just do this kind of thing where I'm using a, a really bright kind of greenish blue teal kind of a color, right? We can hit that and we can take that whole layer and we can just expand it a little bit and rotate it. Whoops. Uh, let me do that again. Expand. Whoop. And rotate just a hair. Okay. Hit it with a different color. All right, and then use a different blending mode, like so. We'll not we'll push it behind the light source so it doesn't interfere with our light source. Um, and I'm going to use a uh, another gradient here because I can, and I don't care, right? Oops, I'm not sure why my my gradient colors always stay the same as what they were before. I do have an update here in Photoshop that I haven't messed with, so it's probably that. I'm just gonna say it's that. Okay, and I have to like come in here now. I love that these are now, um, uh, what's the word? Um, that these are like dynamic gradients. That's like pretty fantastic. Don't get me wrong, I love it, but it's gonna take some getting used to for me to have to like go through these multiple steps to flatten them out and stuff like that. So just so you know, you're not alone if you're out there like trying to figure out new stuff in Photoshop. I gotta do it too, okay? All right, so let's see, where's our photo layer that's pretty dark there? I just wanna mess with that for a minute. Ding dong dong, da -ding -dong -do. where are you? There it is. All right, so this guy right here, y'all. gonna take that and I'm going to take that and I'm gonna change its color because that darkness of all that is for me it's just not quite right so I'm gonna desaturate it and make it a little lighter Okay, oops, there we go. And then just pull it up like this. That feels better. All right, I'm picky about stuff, you know. You gotta be picky, gang. All right, you ready for some Spidey? Let's do it. So, remember all the stuff we observed looking at those frames from the from the film, okay? From the trailer of the film, rather. Um, and I'm just gonna draw myself a Spidey. I'm gonna use line art for this, okay? But I might maybe even have some time for a little bit of rendering. Um, got all kinds of options here in the Monger Brush set. 
don't forget you also have a bunch of cool you know um half tones you know which we can throw in basically anywhere there aren't that many strong solid rules um for how you're going to do this so don't feel like oh i really have to do it you know this way or that way um no it's fine you're you're going to be in good shape Ooh, i like that i think that's a little better i like having that that color be a little stronger there so we can knock this back a little bit right there that feels kind of much better right there um, playing with layer blending modes and all that stuff is just one of the best things you can do. But with, with these kinds of, you know, fills, uh, you could just throw these in wherever you want. It doesn't matter. And you can also do those things we saw that were so fun where you just have a shape. You know, you can draw, use your regular lasso tool. Um, you know, kind of just... Remember how we saw these sort of trapper keeper kind of elements and they even had sort of an outline to them. Um, go ahead and grab some some basic brushes if you want from uh, the earlier brush sets. You know, if you go to like a summer 2022, for example, grab that chipped paint brush and throw some color down, and then um, lock that layer transparency and make selections inside like this and get yourself a little kind of patchwork stuff going on like we saw right it's kind of like a pattern kind of element right there and then use something that's got more of a sort of a pattern to it like the Aztec right there maybe you want to use a grid that kind of thing and that just sits there whatever um, you can take that same shape and you can um, unlock that layer transparency and grab like the uh, concept carver or something like that, doesn't matter. Grab a darker color and just kind of like hit the edge like that. Can do this remember this is uh, if you go back to where we were looking earlier um, at that very first first uh, frame we were looking at together right here right where they just throw in these these elements zoom out and you can see see that right there right there just it's just sitting there that's just sitting there whatever no rules gang you know you can put that in there if you need to colorize it you can go to your hue saturation and you can slide that around until you feel like it's kind of like doing more of whatever's happening in your illustration like that. So it's a little less distracting, doesn't matter. Okay. And then go ahead and where we were just now a moment ago in the manga brush set, right? You just grab one of these right here um, and add a layer. And we just throw in some some of those uh, diagonal lines right there, and we clip it to what's underneath, okay? And then change its blending mode, right? You can do any kind of blending mode on that. It's really subtle. There you go, like overlay, for example. Okay, doesn't matter. Do what you want. You can blend those together. Darken everything up, lighten everything up. Use a blending mode for that even. Linear burn, multiply, darken, overlay, vivid light. I like vivid light and then just knock it back to like 60%, something like that. This You can spend so much time on the backgrounds just playing with this stuff. All right, let's draw some Spidey here. We've got a few minutes left. You know I'm quick, I can do this, we got it. All right, so here we go. Let's... Go into our um, do -do 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 -do. spring 2019, and we'll, uh, maybe the Sean brush. This might be good for this. I don't have that much control with it, but I have enough. Okay. And here I'm just going to draw my, my Spidey right there. 
okay? And another thing I forgot to point out was like how much extreme foreshortening there there was. So I think I'll take advantage of that that whole thing. We'll do that like this. this way and then the other one right here bending behind okay Gotta get that shape right. There we go. Leave enough space for that palm. Kabam. Okay. And then you can take this outline here and you can darken parts of it just to have that pop forward like this. You know what I mean? And then remember that trick that they had for the silhouette, okay? Where we just go behind it, and there are parts that I can go outside of, and I can get like really specific in some areas, but then more sort of like general in others, like that, you know. I can go completely offset there. And you know, this can be refined later, but the idea is really simple that you just wanna like really pop whatever the action is, make it pop forward, okay? It has to be like the thing that you wanna draw attention to and um, can you give it some transparency. And then I come in front of this and that's where I'm gonna add my, my color which again, also I could easily offset, right? And you know how to do this. It's like totally layer blending modes are your friend, okay? Filters are your friend. All right, so here we go. Now um, for, my, for my color, what I do is I first block in an area Okay, I get that, that area blocked in and I can lock that layer transparency or use clipping masks to draw on top of it where maybe I'll do some actual rendering, some more painterly kind of stuff, you know, using like the impressions uh, brush, for example, I wanna push this back. But remember the stuff we saw them doing? Like just crazy stuff where they would just be like, I'm just gonna get sloppy with it, you know, and here just be like, oh, well, I gotta push that back. So I'll just do that. You know, just push that back, that kind of thing. You could totally do that if you want and just like make that darker. This is all like totally fair game, right? Um, totally fair game.
can color outside the lines, right? Doesn't matter. You can take this whole color layer, duplicate it, okay? Transform it so it's a little wonky, little wonky, little crazy. Okay, change that color. Go ahead, change that color, and now use a blending mode. Like, um, let's see, how do I do this? Maybe like vivid or hard light, pop it behind the other. See what it does there? See that effect it creates? Right, and then you can inside this shape, add a clipping mask, okay? And now you just do like some basic shading. So remember how I have like light is behind Spidey here? So we just do this like behind this shape here. Like we suggest that the light is behind him. So we just cut out this whole area. I'm gonna run out of time now, sorry gang. I know I'm gonna get cut off. The time band hammer is gonna hit me hard. But for those of you on YouTube, stick it out because you're gonna see what I'm talking about right here. I can multiply that, use some bright color, and there's more to be done, but you get the idea. I hope this was educational. I hope you learned a lot. Um, thanks for sticking it out. And uh, folks, there's so much you can do with this. There's so much you can do. I wish I had a bit more time, but Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, remember to be kind, and I'll say ciao for now.